This is Carl at National RV Detroit and I'm going to walk you through this 2023 Puma travel trailer, model number 28 DBFQ. So I'll walk you around and uh, show you some of the features and how they work, okay? All right, so come here to the uh, door side rear. You can see that you have power stabilizers. One switch controls both rear and the one switch up front controls both front. While I'm standing here, you have a quick connect. If you can see that, let me see if I can get a picture of it for you. Right there, a quick connect for the LP system. So you can plug a, a grill or whatever you have into the, right into there, okay? Now, I'll just walk around the other side for a second to show you that, um, uh, let's see here if I can get down that low. Hold on. The, this is the other side of the stabilizer jacks. Uh, you see it's got a shaft with a pin through it. That means you can crank those manually if you, if you have to. If you get into trouble, um, you can actually crank those manually. Um, let me look up here. I guess I should have done that already, but I'm sure it's cold and not with it here. Hold on. Let me look here. Okay, so. Oh, let's get this up here. Okay, so. You have this crank right here, as you can see. And it, uh, it has a cylinder with a, with a slot cut in it, right? So you can fit that right over that shaft with a pin through it, and you can crank those manually in an emergency, okay? Also, this one will also work. It's, it's a little different. It's like a three-quarter inch with a slot, but you could get away with that if you needed to. Um, but that three-quarter inch uh, crank, if, if this is your power tongue jack, obviously, if it was to fail, you could pull this rubber plug right out of here, stick the crank on there, and you can crank this manually, too, if you had to, to get yourself out of trouble. Okay, so those are both good features, obviously. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. This is the uh, uh, door to the to the bathroom. That's basically so you know you can kids or guests can just go right to the bathroom into the bathroom without going through the trailer, which makes it real simple. Okay, you have a power awning with LED strip outside speakers um, this here is your black tank flush so um, if uh, let's say um, you've dumped your black tank right if you do that like it says on the sticker you leave the valve open on the black tank you could hook the hose of the dump station on there and you could actually uh, uh, spray out your black tank, clean off the sensors, that sort of thing. So it's a good thing to do if you've got a working hose at the dump station, you know, that hasn't been run over or anything, you can put it on there and, and uh, flush it out. This is, uh, this is a, uh, a quick connect for a, a coiled sprayer right there. There's another LP quick connect here. Like I showed you the one in the back, there's another one here. The reason it's here, let me see if I can get this up with one hand here, holding the camera, yes, can I do it, pretty close, <laughs> well, I might have to, there we go, okay, I got it, all right, so the reason they have that is because you're, uh, you gotta, let's see how this works here, Uh, uh, uh. Come on, Carl. Think it through. There we go. You can uh, pull your your uh, griddle out, and there's a quick connect here, and then, of course the one there, and then there's a, a hose that's in here somewhere. I did, I'll look around to make sure it's in here for you, but it comes with a rubber hose with quick connect fittings on it, and you can uh, you can plug it in right there. Okay. I'll make sure I look for those. Um, this is just TV signal out and power and a bracket to hang a TV out here if you wanted to. This is a vent for your range hood. Um, keep in mind if you're, if you're using the fan in the range hood, you can flip that baffle in there open. It's open right now, it'll flat freely. It'll snap shut if you want it to, like when you're traveling or in storage. So um, make sure if you're venting, you want it open so it flaps freely. That is the, um, the, um, vent for your furnace. Uh, this 
is your fresh water fill. So the most common way to get water to the trailer is the city water hookup, which is on the other side. If you don't have city water where you're camping, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank right here, and then you can use the onboard pump to pump the water. I'll show you the pump switch when we get inside, okay? So either way you'll have, it'll work like it has city water. So this is the water heater here, okay? This works on, let me just take this off so we can see. This works on both gas and electric. Um, right now it is empty and bypassed because the trailer's winterized. So this is the drain plug right here. He's just got it sitting in there, right? Um, so that's, uh, takes an inch and a sixteenth six point socket to, to uh, remove it. Um, this switch right here is the, for electricity. It's an on and off rocker switch. That controls the electric heating element that's behind this cover here, right? So keep in mind, you always, when, it, when, when uh, camping season starts and you want to start using this, you've got to put the water heater into camping mode. You have to put the plug in there and make sure you fill it up before you turn it on. It's always got to have water in the tank. The tank is directly behind here. It's a six gallon tank. So make sure you always fill your water tank before you turn on the gas or electric. So this is the gas burner. I'll show you the switch when we get inside. Um, so that, that's your water heater. Now, I'll just show you briefly. I'm not going to go into great detail here, but you see this hole right here? Oh, I have to show you underneath because won't, you won't be able to see it unless I do. There's a shaft with a pin through it right there, right? So the three-quarter inch crank I showed you and the, with the slot in it that's in the front compartment, you could actually crank your opposite slide out in and out manually using that in an emergency. So you could always get your slide out in, even if it just dies for whatever reason, um, you, can, you can crank it in and out, which is a great feature to have. They're very reliable, obviously, but you never know what can happen. So keep that in mind also. All righty, there's your front stabilizer switch. This is just in case you were to purchase a solar panel to charge your battery. Uh, it's, this one is made by Go Power, and that's just a, a plug you could plug into if you wanted to. Okay, two LP tanks full with automatic changeover regulator, your power tongue jack, of course, your deep cycle marine battery, and your kill switch for your battery. If you ever want to shut the battery off for any reason, you can just shut it off right there. Okay, we come around this side. This is your hitch stuff. We'll show you how that operates when you pick up. It's a Husky Centerline weight distribution hitch with built-in sway control, so it's a, it's a good one. And we'll show you all about it when you pick up. And that box is your um, dump hose. And this little uh, piece here is, a, is an adapter for your, for your power cord to pull, adapt it down to 20 amp if you need to. Okay, all righty. So here we go. That's the slide room. This is an outside shower for kids and dogs and feet or whatever you have. This is your city water hookup, the most common way to get water to the trailer. Okay, these are your dump valves. So you have a black valve over here and two gray valves. Black is toilet water and waste, gray is sink and shower water. So um, you always dump the black first, then the gray. And if you're going to flush the tank, like I showed you, leave the black valve open while you do that. Okay, let's see what we got here. This is your sprayer, your, your coiled sprayer I told you about, or coiled hose for the quick connect. I wanted to check up here. I think he shut the, the uh, gas off in here. I'm sure he did. Just let me turn it on here. Yeah, he had it shut off. So I knew I turned the heat on, but it's not running. That's why. Okay. Okay, so that's on now. Um, let's see what else we have here. This is your cord. It's a 50 amp shore cord, 50 amp power cord. You have a, you get this reducer with it to reduce it down to a 30. And then I showed you the other one up in the in the pass through compartment up there that'll even take it down to a 20. So you can plug into anything. This is just cable and satellite through here. You have a ladder, which is a great thing because this manufacturer states you should, should inspect the roof every 60 days. So you want someone to go up there, check all the sealant, make sure there's no crack or separation. 
check the roofing attachments and roofing material to make sure they weren't damaged by low branches or uh, road debris, anything like that. So just keep after it. Um, that housing tells us this is pre-wired for a Furion backup camera. So if you want to add a Furion backup camera, it goes right there. Okay, so let's go inside. I got the fireplace going, but the furnace hasn't been running. But it's still be warmer than it is out here. Much warmer. Okay, it's not so bad. So if I come back over to the, um, the thermostat, I'll just shut it off for here. Whoops, shut it off. Give it a second. Okay, then I'll go through it. You scroll through it, cooling, there's air conditioning, there's back to furnace, so it should kick on now. There it goes. Okay. If it doesn't have gas, like if the gas is shut off, it'll kick on, but when it can't light, it'll just shut itself down. Okay. So, you have your slide room switch here. Your power awning here, never leave the awning out unattended, of course. Lights, which are on. Um, your water pump, remember I told you you could pump the water out of the fresh water tank, is right there. You also use that to winterize the trailer. And to light your water heater on gas is right there. There's the fault light. Remember I told you the electric switch is uh, in the lower left hand corner on the outside. And then you can check your, check your tanks here. Batteries charged, fresh water is empty, uh, black. You don't have three grays in this one, I think you have two, so you just pay attention to one and two. But they're all, they're all, all empty like they should be. Um, and they graduate up in one-third increments as they fill, okay? Um, your keys are hanging right here on the faucet. Okay. See if the heat's working here. Yeah, it sure is. Okay, so your microwave works like any other microwave. This is the range hood. Remember I told you that if you're going to run the fan, you want to open that baffle on the outside, okay? And then um, light, of course. To let your, this, this is important here. This, this, is your, this switch is for your refrigerator. It's a 12-volt DC refrigerator. You, first of all, you should always have it latched so the doors don't get dented when you're traveling. But you can turn it on and off right there. So you don't have to, when you put it in storage, you don't have to have it... Uh, have it running, you can just shut it right off. All right, right there. Okay, let's see if we got enough gas worked up here. It's going to take a little bit because it's been shut off. So this is the sparker. You turn it clockwise to spark. You have three knobs for three burners, and then the oven knob is right there. So let me see if I can do this here. There we go. First try. Okay. Now the oven's a little bit different. Down at the bottom here, all the way to the back, there's a pilot light. Maybe I can spark it and you can see it. It's hard to see. Sometimes you can't see it. Um, so uh, you're going to go to the picture of the flame on the oven knob and then you depress it. You keep it depressed. You light the burner down here. Once you see it light, you hold this for another 10-15 seconds for the thermocouple to heat up. Then you'll go to operating temperature, of course. When you shut it off, the pilot light goes out, so you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. You also have light here, of course. Always travel with this cover down. It will break if you leave it up. Um, okay, so down here, we have two devices. First of all, this is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be green like it is. If it's not green, get it serviced. Uh, this also, if it beeps very slowly, the same tone, but very slowly, it's telling you your battery's low. So it does carbon monoxide, LP gas, detector, and a low battery alarm. Okay? If you want to test it, you can go like this. ILP is good, carbon monoxide coming up. Good, and then the LP gas, or low, low battery. And then back to green, it should always be green. Okay? This is your power converter right here. So this converts AC to DC power. So right here you have regular 110 AC circuit breakers, right? And they're all labeled. Then you have um, 12 volt fuses up here and they're all labeled over here. So it takes
takes AC, where you're plugged in, it takes your AC power, converts it to 12 volt DC. It's also a battery tender, so it's going to sense how much energy your battery up front needs, and it'll always keep it charged. It also um, has intelligent battery detection that can tell what kind of batteries you have on there automatically. So it's a battery charger slash tender, and it also converts 110 AC to 12 volt DC. Okay? Alrighty. Next, we are we have we have a newer guy that's prepping them and he doesn't do it the exact same way, but there there are remotes for this whole area. You have a remote for your fireplace, remote for your sound bar, and a remote for your TV. Starting with the fireplace, you can also use these buttons here. But right here you see you can see low, high, those are fan speeds, right? So high obviously is, is really kicking out the heat. You can also change the looks of this. You can see the change the color of the flame. And you can change the color of the crystal. And it has a timer also, so you can set the timer on it. All right, this sound bar has AM, FM radio, right? You have a USB so you can stream, you know, uh, or you can, excuse me, you can take your favorite music or all your albums, whatever, on one stick and plug it in right there if you want. Um, this this uh, HDMI right here is an in, so if you wanted to go into the system, let's say with a portable Blu-ray player or something, you could go right into the system there if you wanted to. It has Bluetooth, so you can use, stream from your phone to your tablet. It has two speaker zones, one and two. One is inside the trailer, two is outside the trailer, so uh, it does a lot. Um, your bracket is a swing out bracket on here. Always have that green light up there lit. That's, um, that's the digital signal booster. And this pre-wired panel you see there, they're just telling you that this is pre-wired for a, a digital signal booster um, and router. So there's also another port on the roof. Basically, if you're interested, you can, you can go to uh, kingconnect.com, it says there, and you can look at their products. But, um, basically, it would be consist of a, an antenna, a Wi-Fi antenna on the roof, and then um, it would have a router that is in here. So, okay. All righty. So, moving on, thermostat we looked at. Bunks are self-explanatory. The bathroom we briefly looked at. But you have a the sink and shower work like any other sink and shower. This is a GFCI. All the plugs in the trailer, even the one on the outside, are wired to a GFCI. So keep that in mind. The toilet has a flush pedal right here, and um, it's, it's winterized right now, so you see some antifreeze in there. But um, the thing is, the black tank is directly below, right? And when you get to the campground, it should be dry. It should have been flushed and empty, right? Um, dumped, and dumped and flushed and empty. So you can't use it dry, because if you do, this, the smell will be terrible, plus you can get clogged up, right? So what you do is you put a dose of chemical in here. This is after you've hooked up the power of the water. You put a dose of chemical in there, and you stand on the pedal and let about a gallon of water or more flow into the tank below along with the chemical. Then it's ready to be used. Um, if you use it dry without doing that, like I said, it's, uh, it's, uh, it'll get clogged up and it's, uh, it'll smell terrible. So it's one of those things you'll only, one of those mistakes you would only do once, I think. So, okay. All righty, let's see what else we have here. Okay, this is a, let's see what we got here. This is a jackknife sofa, so a jackknife to a bed. You can drop the poles on this tabletop and set the tabletop on these cleats all the way around. There's five cleats. Use the back cushions and fill them in. You got another bed here, so you got you know, two bunks and two auxiliary kind of beds here. Um, then you come up front to the bedroom. Obviously, uh, um, this, if you grab the, the foot of this bed and pick it up, there'll be storage underneath. You have TV hookups here if you wanted to add a TV, and there's a back plate here for a bracket, so you could you could put a bracket so you could see it from laying down uh, when you're laying down. Um, light switch. Um, this is the emergency escape window. It goes like this. You push it all the way through. I mean, all the way through, and then you would grab a hold of this red tab and pull the screen out, and you can um, escape in an emergency if you need to, okay? 
All right, so let me look around here. This is telling us here, this is a 50 amp system, and that's because this is pre-wired for a second air conditioner. That's what that sticker is telling us. The air conditioner would fit right in here. We, we do this, we, we install those all the time, so if you're interested in ever getting another one, it'll fit right in here, and uh, it's, all, it's set up for that. So, okay, you can add a second AC if you want. All right, so let me look around here. I think I've got it all. Yes, yes. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Please remember what I said about inspecting the roof every 60 days. That's per the manufacturer, so you want to have somebody keep after that um, just to protect your investment. It's, it's a part of general maintenance of your trailer is it keeping an eye on your roof seals, okay, and, and, and make sure there's no damage by low branches or whatever. And the next thing is, right now this is winterized, so all the water's been purged from the system. It's been replaced with antifreeze. The water heater is bypassed and empty right now. Okay, so it's set till, till, your, till camping season. Once you get ready, make sure you put water in the water heater tank before you turn it on. That's important, okay? Okay, thank you.